Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Working Horses with Jim. As you can see, it is raining outside. And that's okay. We had such a great stretch of weather the last week now. We have put in a tremendous amount of hay and things went really well there. Very few breakdowns. So thankful for that. Um, but it's, we've, everything's cleaned up and rain is coming in now. As you can see in our barnyard, it's really raining and we're getting a muddy mess again. I'm quite excited because we actually have some sand coming in this morning. No, I'm sorry. We have some sand coming in sometime here soon. I have a sand pit up the road and I'm getting some sand trucked in from my barnyard to make it a better barnyard. So this morning we have all the horses in. They probably would be going outside. They were outside last night, but they'll probably be going outside again today because it's raining. And I don't expect I'll be doing too much with them today. I actually have a little bit of song I could do first thing this morning. And I was sort of thinking the last couple of days that with rain coming in, I'm gonna try and get Baron over here, get him harnessed up and even hitched to maybe Ken and hitched to the sled and hitched to the truck body just to teach them to, him to stand. But that's not gonna to happen today. So today I have some song to do, but uh, let's, uh, Let's go up into the hay barn real quick. Like I want to just show you the progress that we're making up there. Okay, so we're in the top of the hay now. And I actually have a little drop cord that I have for light that I have there, which makes it really nice because it gets quite dark up in here when you're working. And when the bales are coming down, it's rather hard to see and to get it stacked up. But as you can see, we're getting quite a lot of hay in here. I'm not sure how many bales we do have in here, but I knew now, I think it was Saturday night. Now this is actually Tuesday morning, July 12th, I guess it is. And this video probably won't come out until Friday. A lot of people, I think, I think that they think that we can just do a video and have it on immediately, but it just, sometimes it takes several days to make a video. So, um, we have to kind of plan that accordingly. So I'm working on a video two days, three days in advance to have it ready for a particular day. But anyways, um, I think it was Saturday night. We were in here and we had a really, really good day. I think I was able to stack like a thousand bales on Saturday because we ended up, there was two loads in here that weren't stacked that I had to stack. We just dumped. And then Brenda unloaded five loads that day so that's eight loads that were stacked in this barn. So I'm quite sure there was a good thousand bales just on Saturday. And then yesterday we did 500 or over 500 bales we put in and stacked. So I'm very pleased with the progress that we've been making. This half of the barn, I think we're probably at the halfway point, um, is almost to the rafters and we can still get more in here, but uh, it is coming along great. Now we have, in what I call the upper field, which is the field right here beside the barn, we have um, one more field to cut, and that's my new seeding with oats. Oats are not did not grow that well because it was so wet. Usually wet ground makes oats grow good, but it was almost too wet. So they're not that tall, but they're right in the milk stage now, so I want to cut them. And what we're going to do some years, we'll cut them and, and bale them up, round bale and wrap them. This year, we may wrap them, but if I can get them dry, we'll just round bale them as dry hay because that'll save a lot of money because the wrap has really gone up a lot this year. Um, so we need to, if at all possible, save on um, save money there by um, just drying it if we can. I'll show you a real quick peek out the window if I can. So here we are on the top of my barn, as you can see. The field is all done. Even the corner piece out by the house, although we need to do some, a little bit of cleanup there. But uh, it's all done. And you can see the furthest field, we ended up hiring our neighbor to round bale it. So I think there's 26 bales up there that still need to be brought in. And the oats, you can just barely see them in the distance. But uh, hopefully in the next day or so, we'll get to cutting them. I see a few turkeys out there at the moment. So now 
I guess it's time to do a little song. We, we like to take advantage of these rainy days where I can't work in the field to do some other odds and ends, which one of them means song. So let's go to the sawmill. Okay, so today what we have is a need for one by fours. A friend of ours and customer had ordered a bunch of one by fours. He wants to put a roof on his barn or his garage. Basically re-roof it. It's a, uh, it might be shingles now, I'm not sure. It must be shingles now and he wants to put steel on it. So he needs a bunch of one by fours for strapping. Now generally I would just get one by fours as I'm sawing. All the outside boards tend to be, I make a lot of one by fours, but um, in this situation I need to kind of hurry up and get it done and get it done fast because I haven't got to it and he might be in need of it at any point. So I am going to do what I don't normally do. I'm going to take this big log right here. I think it's 14 foot long and it's a nice size log and I'm just going to put it into everything will be one by four. This is a log that really should have gone into like two by eights or something like that. But under the circumstances, I'm just going to cut it into one by fours and be done. It's so important to keep up on my lumber orders, although I have very few compared to what I used to do. But when I'm trying to hay, I got to hay when the sun shines, so it makes it hard at times. So we'll saw this up into one by fours and get that order done.
Okay, we got this logged on. Well, let's count how many we have here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that's twelve times three. There's thirty-six of them. So most people go when they need to get um, strapping for their buildings. They go by the lineal foot. So so there's thirty-six here. So there'd be like a little over five hundred lineal feet, which will go a long ways on a lot of buildings because they're stretched out, you know. But anyways, this is done. Um, I can hear that the rain is still falling. And I just thought I'd show even right now, we have had a lot of people um, comment here in the sawmill building about our roofs. Let me see if I can find the spots. Um, Okay, right up here, for example, we have all this lumber stored through here. This is all basswood, but anyways, we have all these holes in our roofs. And what it is from is many years ago, when we first moved here, the roof that was on here was a very poor roofing, and it was just deteriorating. So we had this big building, it's 120 feet long, that we had to do something with, and we couldn't afford to do much, we just didn't have the money. So we were able to find an old shed that um, the people were willing to give us the steel if we took it down. So my family actually came up and helped and we had a big crew and we went over and tore that whole roof off that building and brought it over here and put it in this building here. And since the, the building was, or the people that put the roof on, put it in the ridges instead of the flats, it's amazing how very little this barn leaks as you look through, it's been a, it's still raining, it's, it's a rainy day, and there's just hardly any places where this roof is leaking. And it's just amazing because there is a lot of, a lot of holes up there. But anyways, let's, uh, let's get on to some horse work now. Good morning, everybody. Well, it is a beautiful day out. The sun is shining. It's about nine o'clock in the morning. And uh, it's such a nice change from yesterday and all the rain we had yesterday. Yesterday I did get the rest of my 1x4s all sawed up, sawed up for my customer. Here they are right here. So I had to saw quite a few more little logs that I had to finish that up. But that job is done. And now, like I said, we're going to go on to some horse work. And I was kind of torn between what to do this morning. I no, I have some nice weather coming up and I knew I had to get some hay down. So which hay do I cut? I got the whole lower farm, which is just grasses, grass hays. And then I've got the piece out back here of my new seeding with oats for a cover crop. So I knew I had to start on that, but I also actually wanted to show you guys what, a, what little bit I've been starting on on the new stalls that we're going to have for the, for the Suffolk colt. Suffolk colts that we have um, for this winter we need more space so I was hoping to even show you what's going on there but that we'll just have to wait for another time I also want to think we actually get the harnesses back the new harnesses back so I'm looking forward to showing you them in the near future but today to finish up this video we need to go cut these oats so I want to explain a bunch of things about cutting oats and and just things in general on um, with oats for making hay so what we have here is my mow machine and what I did on my mow machine because this is um, new seeding. So when you have new seeding, you end up with having stones in the fields that you might have missed. So because of that, I like to have my cutter bar lifted a little bit higher than I normally would so that I'm less apt to hit stones and even clumps of dirt that might not be completely flattened down. So I, I put my cutter bar up a little bit higher and I'm going to show you how I do that, or how I did that. There are shoes on this. There's one shoe right here, and that's, you know, you adjust that by that bolt and the different holes. On this end of the cutter bar, you have a shoe that's a little bit different, but it's somewhat the same way. You have this bolt right here that adjusts that up and down. So I have this cutter bar approximately three inches off the ground, two and a half to three inches off the ground. And uh, that will allow me to cut these oats. It'll be a higher stubble than I normally would have, but for new seeding and with oats, that's the way to go. 
Um, one other thing on my mow machine that you might have even seen in a video earlier, I have a strap here that actually holds the cutter bar up and I'll explain why. So this dog right here, I call it a dog, is worn out so much that it doesn't work. Normally when you push down on the lever and the foot lever and hand lever, that will snap into place and that dog should hold that cutter bar up. So, but what happens is it's not. So when I let go, it falls to the ground. Now when I'm mowing, it's not that big of a deal. I just hold it up my foot or whatever. But when I'm coming back and forth to the house, from, from the barn to the field, it's, it's a pain not to have that to hold in place. So I just take this strap and go around the whole thing and, and connect it. Um, I have to get that fixed sometime. It's just a matter of getting over and getting a new one of those because that's worn out. Um, so we got to do that. There is a slight possibility that I can even adjust this a little bit and get it to working better. One of those jobs should have done two years ago and I still haven't got to it. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but with the business of all, that's sometimes the way it works out. But let me lift up this cutter bar and I'll show you these shoes just a little bit better and then we'll go cut. So at this angle, maybe the shoes are a little bit more clear to how they work. This is the shoe. And then this is the shoe. So let's take the boys out and get started. I say boys, I mean boys and girls, because I have a lady and Bill with me today. And that's who we're mowing with. And right, back up, guys. Up, lady. Epa, ave, ave, ah. My clover field that I cut earlier and put into round bales and wrapped round bales is coming back very nicely. Off to our right is where we hayed last or about last. Come into our oat field. Ah. 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 Capsa. 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 Okay, so here we are in the oats. And the oats this year are not very thick and they're not very tall. And that's okay. If you recall, or maybe if you haven't been watching my videos that long, last year my oat field, which was off to our left in what now the clover field, we actually had my Amish friends and neighbors come over and harvest it. And they um, harvest it for oats. But this year I've decided, and what I normally do is round bale and wrap it. This year I may wrap it, I may not. We'll have to see how the weather progresses the next few days. But. Um, the stage that these oats are in right now is in what we call the milk stage. So I will grab a handful of oats off the stalks. And attempt to show you what I mean by the milk stage. So if you grab the, the oats like this and put it between your fingers and squeeze, you'll actually see... Oops, not that one. you'll actually see white substance come out of them. 
don't know if that's very clear or not. Let me see if I can get a couple others here. So, I'm not a the best one to tell you all about this stuff, but the white stuff is what we call the milk, milk in the milk stage. There's a, if I remember right, there's a milk stage, there's a dough stage. Okay, what I did is I took the outer layer off this one seed of oats, the husk, and now as I squeeze it, you can see the milk in that oat kernel. And so it goes from a milk stage to a dough stage. It's actually getting a little bit tougher, meaning um, it's actually turning more into the dough stage. There's a, a lot of milk right there. So you get the milk stage, the dough stage, and then maybe the hard stage. I, I wish you guys could answer these for me. And I'm sure, I'm sure there's a lot of non-farmers out there that would love to know the actual terms for all this. So you guys that, actually know the terms better than I, please, um, if, if people have questions in my comments, and I'd love to have them, feel free for anyone out there that has knowledge on this stuff to answer these comments to these people, because a lot of these people want to learn, but they, they don't, they just have never seen this, so, and I don't have the time to answer all these comments, um, although I do try to read all of our comments, um, but neither my wife or I have time to answer them all. So um, if you guys that are knowledgeable about this see a comment that you think you can answer, please, by all means, answer it for these people so they can learn as we go along. Um, even today, um, Brenda is at our, our church and she is teaching Bible school, so she's not here to even help do the um, videoing and so it's just it's it's kind of tough with the amount of stuff that we have going on to, to answer all this so um, but I those are the those are some of the things we look for with oats and I try to make my hay when I make hay in the milk stage so we will start cutting here and uh, see how it goes When you're dropping the cutter bar down and when you're picking up, you have to be very careful not to get your fingers in where the knives are. Because they do slide a little bit when you're picking them up and dropping them. Cast out.
Mati. Si, 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 si. Ya. We are just about done. I would say just up and back and I will be all done. It's gone really well. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'm hoping you're enjoying your summer as much as I am. You guys have a great day and we'll see you next time. See?